Hi, I'm Blanca Vlasic and you're watching Inside Athletics. I'm still waiting for Otto. I don't know if he's going to come. So if not, well, you will be deprived of some really interesting things about me. Our guest on this week's Inside Athletics is one of the most magnetic personalities in the entire sport. It is my pleasure to welcome Blanca Vlasic. Blanca, we missed you at the Olympics last year, but we saw you this year in New York having a good time back to your regular self. Yeah. Are you back to your regular self? Not quite, no. To be honest, it's not easy to come back. No matter how um, uh, relieved uh, I looked in, in New York, it was uh, one of the hardest competitions in my life, uh, especially because um, I, I wasn't able to even jump on, in trainings for um, almost a year. Yeah. So um, now I feel like at the beginning of my career and uh, still catching some things that I've missed, you know, feeling for height and uh, trying to stabilize, um, have stability in my technique and you know it goes slowly but hopefully um, you know soon I will get there. Now you have very similar luck to what I had in the Olympic Games in that you've been world champion but the one thing missing from your resume is the Olympic Games. Is that the source of what drives you when you talk about how tough your comeback has been? Yeah. To say you know what I have to come back because I still have that Olympic gold to get. True, uh, Olympic gold is one of my goals, um, you know, uh, but um, what really um, kept me going is just that feeling that uh, I haven't said uh, everything, that there is still something I can do, something more, uh, and that my uh, end is not uh, near yet. So um, I, I use that time uh, for um, also uh, refreshing myself um, uh, inside also because after doing the same thing for 15 yeah. years you feel that you need um, a fresh motivation and that's what I've gained uh, through this um, uh, period uh, you know being out of uh, the circuit so until I feel that I have nothing to say anymore I will keep trying now your father was a, a very very good uh, the Catholic. Yeah. Was there any doubt early in your life that you were going to do another sport? Because I know that yeah. they looked at your height and they said, oh, maybe basketball. And you said, no, yeah, don't I like tried. team sports. I like the individuality. Yeah. Was yeah. there any doubt that you were going to be in, in athletics? Well, um, I've tried a lot of sports. Maybe it, it was just a part of my um, growth. Um, I growth. wanted, <laughs> yeah. I, my father uh, wanted me to develop all kinds of skills. Yes. Uh, because well, he did 10 events, so of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we started with playing just with a tennis ball, you know, catching it with left hand, with right hand, mm. juggling with three balls, you know, doing some gymnastics uh, elements, you oh, know. you would have been too tall for gymnastics, Yeah, for but, sure. you know, he, he, he wanted to, uh, to, to um, see how well my mot uh, motoric uh, possibilities are and he saw that uh, even though I'm tall and yes. have long legs and long hands, that uh, I'm not going to fall over the zebra, you know, right. on the road. So I, I can really do stuff. <laughs> so, um, you know, but because he had some athletes in stadium, you know, stadium was my other home. And, um, you know, it was, it came naturally for me to start doing some events in track and field events, first long jump, some sprint. But, you know, at the end I saw that high jumping is, um, I'm, I'm the best in high jumping and I'm better than uh, all of the others, of course. I mean, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I, 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 I decided to stick with that. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, if you ask me now if I would do it all over again, my answer would be yes. I strongly believe that this is my calling. This is yeah. my, uh, the thing that I needed to do and uh, I really enjoyed and I, didn't regret it. Speaking of being better than everybody else in the high jump, there's only one name that's ahead of you, and it's the world record holder on the all-time list. Yeah. Now, most athletes get into the sport to be the best of all time. Yeah. When you look at that world record, you've had several very good attempts of it, uh, at it, uh, some of which I've seen. Um, do you feel like, given the fact that you're coming back from a little time off, and as you said, it's not easy to come back no. from an injury. No. Are you still a threat to break the world record? I believe I am. I need to believe. 
it's uh, what keeps me going. Yeah. Um, some some uh, some results in training, you know, from other exercises showed me that I can still make progress uh, right. regarding my physical um, um, preparedness and. Uh, um, I'm even stronger than ever than in some exercises, so my, my body is not still, you know, for, for a waste. Uh, so um, when everything comes together and when I heal completely and, my tech and I put all that, um, I'm able to put all that strength in, in technique in jump, then I think I can go uh, uh, as high as I used to and maybe even higher. So. Motivation is is the key. If I'm motivated, if I keep trying, then you know. Probably, hopefully, I will I will get to the point when when I will be able to try at least again. Yeah. Now, again. I know how big of a celebrity you are in your home country. Tell me about how you've been able to manage that because it hasn't always been great sometimes there's some yeah, sure. sometimes you know you've had a lot of conflicts with the press and so on how have you managed to sort of stay above that and remain focused on your on your sport you answered your question i was <laughs> i stayed focused on my sport how? i i saw i i realized that um, sure when i was younger i i would come home and then i would, I would cry because of some you know article that wasn't yes you know what I said and some you know headlines that it's just you know just for um, attract people it's not really the truth and even you know when my friends would call me sometimes they would say oh this person said something about you they think you are you know your nose in, in is in the clouds <laughs> they don't really know me and I was like losing my mind why right. people talk to about me like this you know then I said, you know, this this is not going anywhere. I told to my friends, whatever you know, just don't tell me. I don't care. Yeah. You know, everybody will think something. It's it's just the mentality of people. So is when, that how you cope by by saying, you know what, I have to block, I have to keep it away from me? You said yeah, you talked about sometimes sometimes I away. keep it away from me, but that's not also the solution. The solution is that you keep remain calm, whatever happens. So I had a lot of uh, unpleasant situations, and um, through, tho through, that, through those times, I've learned that uh, you know it's, it doesn't affect me. If I don't get, uh, if, if it doesn't get to me, I mean, it cannot affect my performances, my uh, who I am, you know. So it's just something that it's not necessary for me to worry about. Right. So uh, when you realize that, of course, it takes time. It takes time, you know. Uh, through um, through years, you just uh, become immune. And also, I live in a small city, and people in our, in my city are really special. They don't. Uh, they don't. They will never tell you that you are a star or something special, which is great, you know. I feel like a regular person walking really? around. They feel they even at your height no, and your success. No, they. Um, I like to think that uh, when they see me, they're they're really friendly. It's like personal relationship with all the all of the people. I'm, I don't know them personally, but they feel like they know me. They, yes. When they come, it's it's mostly positive comments and just you know good luck and stuff like that. So I don't feel my privacy is not threatened. I mean. If I don't want to be seen, I will stay at home. Yeah. You know, it's 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 simple like that. I chose this um, this way of life, um, and I need to deal with all the uh, consequences. So it's just a part of um, my job. We're about a month, a little bit over a month away from the World Championships. Tell me, what is a realistic expectation for people who love you? and want to root for you going into the World Championships? I mean, everything is possible, that's for sure. I would be really happy if I would come to Moscow and think of myself as a favorite for, for one of the medals. Um, in this point of view, I really still don't know what to expect tomorrow uh, because uh, I'm not still consistent, you know? My body, I can do it, but sometimes in competition things are just don't, don't go my way. Right. So I'm not as stable as you, I used to, and that, that's my main goal now, to get stability, to get this, uh, to regain this level of result that I used to have, or, or at least to be at some level of result. 
Uh, so like when I jumped two meters first time this season in, in Germany, I was really surprised. Although I decided not to expect too much this season and just to survive it, you know. Uh, but I'm not giving up of, of about, you know, regarding Moscow. I mean, I will do my best and we are preparing for that. So I will be in good shape and hopefully with some good results behind me and we'll see. It will be a good fight, that's for sure. Yeah. The first time I saw you was in Kingston in 2002 at the World Junior Championships. Yeah. So I will say this to you. Please don't ever change the way you compete. I have enjoyed watching you. Let me just end by saying that we wish you all the best in your comeback and we wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. Thanks for Thank joining me. Thank you so me. much. It was a pleasure.